Okay, this is a replay on the T-54 Lightweight, the Tier 8 Russian tank um, on uh, Winterberg, Runeberg, however you want to call it. Um, and uh, the reason why we're talking about this one in particular, we've done a lot of Runeberg replays, um, both in light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, you know, all sorts of different tanks. But um, one of the things that I've been trying to stress more and more often is that it's not just where you go, it's uh, the decisions that you make when you get there based upon what your team is doing and what the other team is doing. And these, these decisions are really important to the outcome of the game. Um, so ideally what we want to do is we want to get some intel about what they send to the field. You know, there's multiple light tanks on this team. And I always say that I don't like getting a redundancy of spotting. So if this T-37 drives down this middle area here to spot up that 6-7 line, I'm not going to follow him and do the exact same thing as him because it's a redundancy that's, that's completely unnecessary. So if he goes and spots that 6-7 line, I'm going to move up further up and try to spot out um, the back of the field out through the 9 line. And so it looks like that's what he's doing. So that's good. Uh, it gives me at least a little bit of an idea of what they're sending up 6 line, how much pressure they're going to have at what time. And that allows me to then come out here and sort of see what they send out here and miss this D-49. And then miss it again. I recommend not missing those shots, but it happens. So I know that there's a T-49 there and at least he didn't uh, dirt me, so that's the good news. Unfortunately, I can't really get a whole bunch of intel about what's behind him when he's in that position. Um, and it looked like he was going to shift over towards my side. We don't have a whole lot in the field. Most of our team is over on the city side, so that's something that we need to keep in mind. So I want to go see if I can move over to the zero line and to get better shots on him through this side. We, don't, we still don't know if there's anything back on that K line yet because we weren't able to, to spout out that far. But this T-49 is backing off, so it's giving us plenty of room here to, to maneuver. So they're not pressuring us through the field side, right? And we've spotted a, a good amount of their team over on the, the city side. Uh, we still don't know what else is out here in the field, though. And so you always want to try to get the best ideas possible. So I always find that as you move forward here, you can see pretty easily to the back of the uh, K-line. You can also use these bushes to shoot through if you need to. And since they're still not putting pressure on us through this east side, even though we're not playing very well, um, they they haven't pushed up, right? And so we've still got our Object 704 way back here. Unfortunately, he's not going to get any shots right now. And that's why you always want to move up. If you're going to be out on this side, you want to move up early and then fall back. You don't want to start in that fallback position because um, it, it just creates too many... Uh, uh, it gives your opponent too much of an advantage in terms of the terrain, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, a little bit moving forward. So they're starting to get uh, some pressure on us through this field area here. They still control the field, right? And they've got this T-54E1 that's pushing up through this zero line. So I can't be in a position where this T-54 is allowed to, to flank me through this side. Remember, whoever controls the, the zero line really controls the, the field side. So this is not some place where we can hang out, especially since we know that they do have other tanks in the field and we've only got that one 704 way in the back. And so this is a, a problem because our, our tier 9s were mostly uh, on this side, right? We got the 704 on that zero line and uh, for a time the, both the T-54 and the M103 were both on the, that 6 line. Um, which is not necessarily helpful if you don't, if you are on the 6 line you can still get shot from the field pretty easily. And then so Right. Once this pocket starts collapsing, you'll notice that I don't stay here. Right. I already knew that that T-54E1 was moving forward. I don't want to stay there and have to face off against these three, four, five, however many tanks um, uh, in my in my light tank. So I want to relocate and see if I can push through or help in the city in some way. And you'll notice that what our city is doing is that they're all localized in one single area, uh, which is not good because that usually means that they can be pressured from the sides pretty easily, particularly once they control this town area, right? They can shoot down into this um, F-line alley uh, pretty easily. So we want to go see if we can help out over there because we're not going to be able to win the, uh, the field side by ourselves in a light tank. So these guys are YOLOing on this uh, M103 a little bit. And 
so they're shifting over a little bit, you know, as far as the FCM, and you see the Panther coming over now as well, which is what they should be doing, right? All they have to do is, is control this area, and they could shoot down into these guys right here. We were very easily lit. Um, and then we don't have any pressure, really. We, you know, you'll notice that everyone in the town is still bunched up. So even though we sent the majority of our tanks to town, They've, they've all basically hung out in the same area, which has allowed them to, to get flanked, which has allowed them to, well, they haven't traded very well in the opportunities that, they, that they've been given. Um, and so it's a very simple thing where if you are able to put some side pressure on people, you can, you know, get side shots, you can get free damage, um, like we'll basically get on this, this T-110. Or not T-110, just a one tap. However, poorly. And if he's gonna shoot and miss, you wanna, you know, get your free damage in. And then see how he's backing off now, but this JT is still pressuring our guys there. But our guys are still in an eminently flankable position, right? This E75 can pressure from this side, the JT can pressure from this side, and these guys can potentially be boned. So if this 110 is going to back off, I don't want to just sit back on that alley. I want to push up and put some pressure on, right? I don't want to allow this JT to come around. But I need to keep an eye on what this 110 is doing. I don't want to put pressure on the, on the JT blindly, especially since I know that I can out-DPM the 110 while still neutralizing the JT. And so you'll see that the JT is still moving away from me, but now that they've fully got that pincer off on that three line, I can't save those guys anymore. And so this is a, a, a difficult position to be in because this is a situation now where um, there's too many guns for me to, to take these guys on in my light tank. So I need to move away from this. Unfortunately, I'm not able to track that JT as I go through there, which creates an issue uh, because uh, he gets a free shot of, on me. Which hurts because we're, we're reduced pretty low. And see how this JT comes in really late? He's not going to be able to, to do anything there just because you don't want to play one tank against three tanks, especially if your tank is a non to tank destroyer. Um, so I need to go back out into this field, right? We know that they shifted a couple of their guys over, but we know that the T-54E1 at least is still out there. Um, but we still have our 704 sitting back here in that same area. Unfortunately, our GW Tiger P figures that this is a lost game, so he decides to kill himself, which is unfortunate because we he still actually has a bunch of guys in position where they can spot for him and get him shots, but to each his own. Some some people fear the fear the uh, what's the word I'm looking for challenge. Um, and so I want to see if I can figure out where this T54 E1 is at, because if we can take him down, then that sort of unhinges this side a little bit and takes some pressure off of us. The 704 is not doing a very good job of, of pressuring through this side or controlling this side at all. He's basically sitting back and waiting for guys to, to push into him, which is not uh, very good, especially for a non turreted tank destroyer, because if they push two guys at him, eh, he's pretty much done. And so we see the T-54E1 is over here. And unfortunately, he, we are one-shottable, but we need to take a chance that he is reloading or misses or zero damages us because we need to free up this side. What we don't want, what we absolutely do not want is to sit on this side and wait for him to get supported, right? This FCM, too slow. Not gonna, not gonna get here in time, right? And so I can't take that FCM on frontally. Um, so I, I need to move back because I need the 704 to hit him. The FCM, can't one shot me, but I'm not going to be able to deal, you know, the the five shots of damage that I need to kill him uh, before he gets two off on me. So I need to move behind the 704 in this case, who at least gets a shot off on that that JT. So that's good. And so you'll see that this FCM is coming up the zero line. And so to counter that, right, so the, the 704 is down low here. So to counter that, all I have to do is come around on the side and put pressure on, right? And then one of us is going to be able to shoot him. And the 704 gets a shot off, which is great, because now, all of a sudden, he is in a position where I can out-damage him.
Right, so this is a three for one. And then it's just a matter of taking out their, their remaining guys, which we, that we know are all are both on the same side. And there's still plenty of time, so all we got to do is put ourselves in a position to shoot back at the cap. And you can do that from anywhere on this sort of uh, B0-ish, C0-ish area. And then remember, all that you really need to do to reset is to, to track somebody. In this case, this is not a very good shot, but lack of options. And then what I want to do is I want to close this gap in case the 704 bounces. But he does not, so I don't need to close that gap. And then it's just already hunting time. And so the important thing though that we're talking about is that, so we went field initially, right? And basically what we did was we scouted it out. We saw that they didn't have much forward there. And so we stuck around for a little while getting shots of free damage when we can um, without risking too much. Um, and then once, the, once they start actually moving up on, on, through that field side, all we did was um, just fall back, right? Don't make yourself an easy target fall back off of that side. If they've got huge numbers, you're not going to be able to find them off with the light tank. And then we went and supported in the town. Unfortunately, our town players were, were not really that good. Uh, they clustered up. They allowed themselves to get flanked. Um, and that, that really, really hurt them. Um, and again, this is not... You don't want to stay on this F line uh, because whoever controls the field is going to be able to shoot you. Um, and so that's something that you always want to keep in mind. Um, and again, all I did once I got to the town was I came down a different line than where all of our guys were. And we got a bunch of side shots. We put some pressure on the back of that, that JT. And then once all of our guys died there, we had to bail from that as well. And again, you know, you don't want to fight a 3v1 in a light tank or in most tanks. Um, especially from that sort of range. You need to get some sort of distance. And then we just came back out and tried to, to win the field. Um, again, our team was mostly passive, uh, especially in the field side, uh, but you kind of have to work with that a lot of times when you when you play pub battles. You have to, you have to adjust for the sort of um, positions that your team are, are playing, and you can't just allow yourself to you know, bang your head against the wall if your team is going to be be that far back. You know, you have to be in a position where ideally you are keeping your gun active, but um, you're also not throwing yourself away. And so if we look at the stats... Um, so we end up doing a lot of damage, and again, a lot of this is not because we've got a terrific gun. Um, a lot of it is simply the gun was always active. We were always moving. You know, we ended up shooting 31 shells in a light tank uh, uh, in, in a situation where not a lot of those shots were, you know, sheltered shots from from cover. You know, we got some shots on the T54E1 that were protected, but otherwise, most of the the rest of that was flanking in the city um, and and trying to. Uh, um, get our damage out that way and, and help our team that way. And uh, it's it's a big difference. You want to keep your gun as active as possible. The more active that you keep it, the better of a chance you're going to you're going to give your team. And again, you also want to try to save your team as much as you possibly can. And on the same token, you don't want to be so far forward ahead of your team that when you see the enemy team coming that you can't get away. And there's really no excuse to not get away in most of the light tanks unless you get, you know, rushed by tanks that are just as fast as you um it, for the most part you know if i see the t54e1 fcm coming you know it's it's very easy just turn around and leave you know go someplace where you're going to have a, a a better advantage and, the, and that's what you want to do and that's why relocating it is important and it's not just relocating for relocating sake it's reading what your team is doing reading what the enemy team is doing and then making the appropriate call you know understanding hey there's a t54e1 coming on the zero line they have additional tanks they have that panther and the fcm also in the field coming through either the zero line or the eight nine line right and that i in my t54 lightweight I'm not going to be able to stop that. I don't have the fire support. The 704 is behind the rock on the zero line. He's not getting any shots. Um, and so, you know, it's it's being aware of that situation and then saying, okay, I can't stay here. Um, and then 
not just going to the back, right? It would have been very easy for us to go back to the back of the A line, like where the uh, artillery was was camping, and then just wait for the 704 to get start getting shot, and then you know get get a couple shots from back there. But that's that's passive play. I think what you want to do is is something more active and and make something happen. You ha sometimes you have to do that even in light tanks, um, and you just need to find your opportunity and and try to take it. Anyhow, uh, so I hope that was helpful for playing light tanks or f faster tanks in general and in reading what your team is allowing you to do and what the enemy team is trying to do and not getting yourself caught in, in that sort of net. Um, so thanks for watching.